Hi everyone, welcome back to another session of Creole Corner. This is number four and we are here to, um, to learn a few new strums. Uh, today we're going to do a strum called the Kalinda strum and it's a, a wonderful carnival strum. Uh, I guess you could call it a road march kind of strum. So if you um, if you got a minute, join me. Thank you, and um, you know, pour yourself a drink, and uh, sit down, grab your guitar, grab your ukulele or your quattro, and tune up. You know, if you have an electronic tuner, you can tune it up. I just tuned mine before, uh, or you can tune by ear. You know, on your on your fretboard, and let's get busy. So, the Kalinda strum, what can I tell you about it? It's a very exciting strum with a story that goes way, way back and it's part of the, the very famous carnival tradition or tradition that's associated with carnival that's called stick fighting. Kalinda, stick fighting. In Barbados, they call it stick licking. <laughs> so, and there are lots of books written about it. Um, if you want to check it out, go online and have a look. I know in particular there's one by Alame Motley, um, cover, cover Down Your Bucket, or co I can't remember the title of it, but it's worth checking out if you want to know all the details of the Kalinda and the stick fighting story in, Trin in Barbados, and I'm sure there's uh, books about it in Trinidad as well. So we're going to look at the Kalinda strum. It's the, it's a, 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 a drumming tradition that accompanied the stick fighters when they were doing battle or coming to do battle and um, so the drummers would urge them on and give them the energy and the aggression that they felt and um, so the strum has that very forward leaning aggressive relentless you know it pushes you forward that's the whole idea behind the rhythm so it's no wonder this this strum was, or this drumming pattern, um, became part of the carnival repertoire to, to uh, you know, help the, the marchers and the, the, the people dancing in the street, push them forward and keep them going. So it's kind of a road march strum, and it has that very direct, you know, forceful kind of effect. And, um, you know, you want to capture that in your, in your style of playing, and you can use that for certain types of calypsos when you want to really crank up the uh, the adrenaline and get people dancing and, and really moving. This is kind of a last lap kind of a, a, a rhythm uh, that you save to really take it home, you know, so to speak. And um, with that driving, um, you know, very, very exciting rhythm. Um, so what are we doing here when we're strumming, you know, when we strum Calypso, all the Calypso strums I've shown you so far from the, the very first one we did, the, um, the Tinene, and Tinene, by the way, shout out to Ozzy Gurley, who gave me the, uh, the name Tinene, as he was describing the sound that he thought was the default Calypso strum, or Calypso rhythm. And uh, uh, I call it the banana strum as well because it has that sound on banana, 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 and so on. So uh, we did that one. We did uh, the postman strum. We did the temne strum. And all of these strums are working within a fanning action on your strumming hand. So you need to get that nice, relaxed strumming action going if you're going to play Calypso and you can strum all night. So what are you doing? You know, you're using your elbow, of course. You're going up and down like that with your elbow. And you're also using your wrist. Your wrist is also, wrist is also going up and down. And, you know, relax your wrist, rotate it. So let it relax and, and, and rotate with the movement. So you want to be relaxed. You don't want to tighten up. You're not fighting the, the guitar or fighting the rhythm. Um, and if you not relax, you're going to get tired. So the strumming has to be nice and loose and relaxed 
can't get easy as they say, you know. Really get the feel of it, of, of that nice fanning action. And when you're fanning, you're creating basically eight beats. Four down, four up. One, two, three, four down. One, two, three, four up within each bar. So each bar, oh look, I have a, a visitor here. This is Marla. <laughs> She's come to check out the, uh, the music. And um, yes, so you have that nice even eight, eight notes in each bar. And while you're strumming, one, two, you're counting in, you're not counting one, two, three, four. You're not counting on a downbeat, you're counting on every other downbeat. So you're getting one, two, one, two, one, two. Now on paper, it looks exactly the same as four quarter notes. The two half notes look the same as four quarter notes, but the difference is that this is called cut time because it's moving at a slower pace. And the reason you do that is because you dance that way to the, the music. One, two, one, two, one. That's how you're moving. You're not moving to, you know, you're not doing that type of thing when you're dancing. You leave that for other parts of your body. But basically your foot movement is moving back and forth on the pulse of the rhythm. And that's why it's written in cut time. And that's very important. So you have that nice even strum on the strumming hand and you take that and you insert the rhythms that you want to, to create. So we talked about the kalinda. Kalinda, we're going to demonstrate in a second. Um, it's a, a very simple rhythm and it's very heavy on the downbeat, but it has that kick up right away, right after the downbeat. So here's what it sounds like. And you can use any chord to capture the idea before you get into any plane. Just hold a simple C chord or a G chord and, and you can try it out. So here we go. One, two, one, two. So you have the nice even fanning action, but papa, ta ta. first beats that you're accenting. Accent those and so on. And you might think, well, wow, that's such an easy thing to play. But it is very effective in pushing the... And you can see the effect it has. after the downbeat but it's the same idea in terms of designing a rhythm to create an effect remember you're creating a rhythm to communicate to the dancers the emotion and the feel that you're putting into the rhythm and although it's not out there you know with the lyrics and with the horns and with all the other things you're hearing in the music it's in there it's embedded in the music and if you, and the dancer, your body is responding to that message from the, the rhythm that the music is sending you. So the rhythm is so important in communicating the feel. It's all about rhythm in Calypso because this music comes from Africa and the, the rhythmic vocabulary comes from Africa. The chords and the forms and other things, you know, was taken from Europe and the the combination of the African rhythms and the European ideas came together in the Caribbean to create these Creole um, musical concepts that we call Calypso. And there are many other types of, of course, music in the Caribbean that use the same idea. Um, 
Here we go. Nice, even, strong. Speed it up. Yeah, man, now we're going. You're really driving the dancer forward. And how does this work in a song? Okay, so you have songs like, uh, okay, let's take an old goldie. Um, You know, you're driving it forward all the time. And then you have, listen, mommy, listen, trouble in the tongue. Hurry, mommy, hurry, the carrot coming down. All day, mommy, all night, the carrot in the place, and it's pressure in your way. blocking the strings you know within the the rhythm and it creates that lovely uh, percussive effect with your you can hear it when I just relax and let the strings be blocked hear you hear you that's what you're hearing though of the music one two again remember cut time one two one two strum and it's a it's a French African term like I said about the stick fighting and um, it's that drumming rhythm that propel the stick fighters onward very aggressive very relentless pushing you forward it's forward leaning it's the attitude you're creating with this rhythm and all of these rhythms have to have a certain attitude and you want to capture that you don't don't soak a rise you understand don't soak a rise don't make everything sound like soca no you want to capture each individual uh, rhythmic character with your strumming and so to do that you have to concentrate on the patterns and stay within that that framework because once you do and you keep repeating it the rhythm will start to reveal its character and um, it'll show you where you can throw in your improvisation if you want to move away from the basic but stick within that basic parameter and you will capture the rhythm as it should be because you don't want to soak your eyes <laughs> and um so yes it's all about rhythm and the strumming and playing the guitar it's a very sensuous it's, a, it's you're not picking up the uh, the strings 
you know, you're strumming them, you're caressing them, so it has that sensuous sound, a rhythmic kind of sound that you cannot create on a keyboard, and um, or most instruments, even a steel pan. The guitar is perfect for creating this type of rhythm and also giving you the chord basses or the chord basses that you can sing on and entertain yourself and others. So yes, take the time and practice that strum, nice even, you know, fan in action. And once you figure out your chords and stuff, it takes a little time because the fingers can sometimes be a bit, you know, sore after playing, especially if you're playing a steel string guitar. Mine is a nylon string, and which is preferable if you're, it's a little easier on the fingers and I prefer the sound. Um, uh, ladies, you may have to trim your nails, you know, on the, on the hand that you're holding the fretboard. But that's okay, you don't need those nails. You look beautiful without them. Thank you for all the, the feedback you've given. Um, we've done the banana strum, we've done the postman, we've done Temne, and now you have the calendar. And you can always go back and look at the, the previous videos to check out the other strums. Um, you know, I invite your comments and your feedback. Um, thank you for all the kind words and suggestions. Uh, and no, Mary, this is, this is my real hair. It's not dyed or anything. It's just the, uh, you know, bed head to this. So I tied it up with a little uh, bandana like the, the stick fighters do when they come out to, to, to do battle. <laughs> so I hope you enjoy our little session today. And um, if you have a drink handy, today I have a bit of sorrel that I'm drinking. A wonderful... Um, wonderful rich uh, fruit drink. It's made from a flower. It's family to the hibiscus and it has a similar taste to uh, hibiscus tea if you are familiar with that. And you can, you know, you just buy the dried flowers because you can only really get the, uh, the fresh flowers at certain times of the year, but you can get the dried stuff pretty much all year now. Hence why I'm having my little sorrel drink today and uh, it's uh, originally a West African drink that came to the Caribbean and uh, drunk around Christmas time. I understand in Africa it was more the per you know the, the drink of the kings and the you know the more important people in society this was their special drink. So today we have the opportunity to all feel a bit special and enjoy our sorrel drink you can add a little red wine if you wish to give it a little a little kick. Um, but I just prefer to put a bit, bit of ginger and um, some people put cloves or cinnamon even um, to spice it up a bit when you boil it. And uh, once you chill it and add lots of sugar, <laughs> you can't go wrong. So enjoy here. Cheers to you. And thanks for joining me today. See you next time. Marla, how are you, my dear? I think she enjoyed the session. What do you think? <laughs> oh, she's waiting on a treat. La, 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 la. La, la, la.